Hello, my name is Kelly Osuna, and I'm a Spanish teacher at Overland High School in Aurora, Colorado. Over the last year, we have collectively lived through an almost surreal yet traumatic and terrifying global experience with the coronavirus. But today, I'd like to tell you a powerful story of hope and of change. I want to show you how a small group of teenagers helped protect and save the lives of almost 5,000 BIPOC and immigrant people. But let me back up for a moment and give you the backstory. I'm a founding member of Teachers United for Immigrant Rights, an organization dedicated to advocating for our immigrant students and families. Last spring, in the months leading up to the lockdown, we secured a $10,000 grant from NEA. We gave numerous presentations for district and statewide audiences. We had all become trainers of trainers in Know Your Rights, and we were about to train the inaugural group of students, United for Immigrant Rights members, to be trainer themselves. My newly formed club, Students United for Immigrant Rights, was just getting off the ground and already making a name for themselves in our school. For a semester, they organized a school-wide sequence of Hispanic Heritage Month events, volunteered at the Botanic Gardens Day of the Dead celebration, attended our district equity conference, and gave a presentation at our district's Teacher of Color recruitment event as well as meeting with Representative Jason Crow and Omar Montgomery, president of the Aurora chapter of the NAACP. My hope for my fellowship was to continue the momentum and try to expand the reach of SUFER to every Cherry Creek High School. In Cherry Creek, we started the year in a hybrid model, but only a very select group of essential clubs were allowed to meet in person. Thankfully, my activities director went to bat for SUFER and we were granted essential club status so that we could meet face to face. Again, we helped with Hispanic Heritage Month and we created Overland's first community Day of the Dead altar to honor our lost loved ones. We again met with Jason Crow to discuss COVID, this time in our immigrant communities and especially at the GEO Detention Center. And we had a Q&A session with newly elected state representative, Iman Joda, Overland graduate and first generation American. But the schedule and district COVID protocols hindered the work I had initially set out to do. After a brief remote learning period, we returned to in-person hybrid learning after winter break. Those of us in the north area of Cherry Creek became increasingly more distraught by the disparities not only in COVID rates in our BIPOC communities, but also by the personal toll the death rate was taking on our students and staff. After losing two close family friends to the virus myself and realizing virtually every one of my own students had lost someone themselves, I learned about the newly formed Vaccine Equity Initiative Task Force and immediately volunteered at the Equity Vaccine Clinics organized by CDPHE. In March, our district announced that we would return to full-time in-person learning and myself and the Super Kids, along with the members of our race and culture group, immediately began to plan how to keep our community safe. While the parents and students in the south and west areas of the district were clamoring for full return, the BIPOC communities in the north were fearful. After failed attempts at a petition and storming the school board meeting, we realized our only hope was to make the vaccine readily available for our families. The district was initially hesitant to allow us to use school space for vaccines, so while negotiations continued, the kids started volunteering wherever they could. With the support of the district ELA coordinator and our district cultural liaisons, we initially secured district approval for three vaccine clinics at Prairie Middle School in order to target our immigrant and non-English speaking parents. The Super Kids provided interpretation and childcare for families, and we were able to vaccinate 900 North Area families. Subsequently, we hosted two Pfizer clinics at Overland for students 16 above and their families for a total of almost 1,800 North Area students and parents vaccinated, and we even had several school board members and candidates volunteer with us. 5, 10, 20 years from now, when you think back on this unprecedented time in our history, what will you remember? What will stick with you? For the members of SUFER, I am confident they will remember that they changed the lives of thousands of people. At the ripe old age of 14, 15, 16 years old, they were able to use their skills to literally save lives. And even more important than that, they gained the confidence and skills to continue to be social justice warriors in the future. 
Of course, in five minutes, I could only show you a small glimpse of my fellowship year. Other work that I engaged in and want to continue is working with the executive board of the Cherry Creek Education Association, uh, CCEA's newly formed Social Justice Committee, policy work with our LGBTQ pod of the Social Justice Committee, continued collaboration between SUFER and TUFER, and maybe now, hopefully, expansion of our club to other high schools. I also don't want to forget that we need to hold our elected officials accountable to promises of reuniting families, pathway to citizenship for our documented students, and a fair and just immigration system. Thank you for your attention. Please feel free to reach out to me, Keosuna, at cherrycreekschools.org.